All right, let's talk about the atmosphere of the Proterozoic. Remember, all these spheres are connected, so you know this is geology, and, and we need to understand how everything is playing a part, because the atmosphere plays a big part in the geologic record, especially in the Proterozoic. Um, well, I mean, in all of them, but there's this really specific thing. Like, you know what? Let me just get into it. Um, so I think we're going to break this up into a couple of different, this section will break into a couple of different parts, not because it's, um, super long. I just don't want to rush anything. All right. So, uh, we have an evolving atmosphere. So what the atmosphere looked like through the Hadean and the Archean now begins to also look different in the Proterozoic and it will continue to do so throughout time. Um, there was in now as we enter the Proterozoic um, and and get start to get into the middle, uh, the Meso Proterozoic and the Neo Proterozoic processes that started to add free oxygen to the atmosphere um, started to to take place, um, and, but but very little not not to the level that we see now. So in the Proterozoic, what we start to see is the continual decline of carbon dioxide and the increase of oxygen. That's kind of the biggest two things, the decrease in carbon dioxide and the increase in oxygen. And we'll kind of explore why that's the case. Um, so, blah, 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 blah. so we're looking kind of here, we can see again, carbon is carbon dioxide is on the decrease, oxygen is on the increase, definitely not to what we see kind of today, um, but again, it's this decreasing carbon and increasing oxygen that's going to be of important. So it's a tail of two gases. So during the Proterozoic, uh, again, atmospheric carbon decreased, and this was due to um, the carbonate silicate cycle, of which I will go through, um, which for the most part, uh, much of the carbon dioxide that existed, and the reason it, it kind of was on the downslope, um, began to be tied up with various minerals and rocks, especially carbonate rocks like limestone and dolostone in their creation, uh, as well as in the in the biosphere, and that material started to kind of sink to the bottom of the ocean. In fact, the oldest limestone is 2.7 billion years old. Carbon is a big uh, constituent of what makes up limestone. So as the oldest limestone that we know of, about 2.7 billion years old, and with the more and more limestone being created, it actually aided in the decrease in carbon dioxide. But I'll show you how all that works. So carbon dioxide decreased mostly due to this carbonate uh, silicate cycle, but atmospheric oxygen increased, but not quite right away in the Proterozoic. It kind of slowly... Uh, it was kind of stagnant. It wasn't quite there. Then all of a sudden it started to slowly begin to rise up. And we have uh, stromatolites to thank for that. Uh, to find the kind of the reason oxygen did what it did, we need to look at um, the banded iron formations, the BIFs. We alluded to those a little bit when we were talking about the, um, the, the previous unit uh, on the Archean. These banded iron formations started to... Uh, become uh, started to form at the end of the, the Archean, but as we get into the Proterozoic, these banded iron formations become much more um, uh, prevalent, and their creation indicates an increase in atmospheric oxygen. And again, that's huge, that's help uh, that's due in part to the stromatolites. So we'll talk about that. So that's a, um, we'll kind of break it up into two different parts. First, we'll talk about the carbon dioxide decreasing in the first part uh, of this um, Section 8 video. And in the second part, we'll talk about oxygen increasing. So let's talk about this carbonate silicate cycle. So these are different examples of silicate minerals. Silicate minerals in their chemical um, a formula have silicon, SI, and oxygen, O, in their chemical formula somewhere. Silicate minerals are very important rock-forming minerals. So uh, most rocks, um, igneous, for example, are silicate based uh, off silicate minerals. Remember, rocks are, for the most part, two or more minerals combined. So for instance, uh, granite, all right? Granite is a combination of different feldspars, of quartz, of different micas, of different pyroxenes, um, sometimes olivine in a more mafic igneous rock. So these are some common rocks. And if the, the continental crust is mostly granite, 
amongst other things, right? Amongst other things. It's not the whole thing. But there's a lot of granite around, all right? So at this time, there's a lot of granite around. And it has a lot of these silicate minerals, which have silicon, Si, and oxygen, O. That's what makes a silicate mineral. Okay, why does that become important? So remember, to start off, as we're kind of into the latter stages of the Archean and beginning of the Proterozoic, Carbon dioxide's on the decrease. Well, why is that? Well, there's a lot of carbon dioxide around. In fact, let me go let me go back a little bit. Where's that chart? Look how much carbon dioxide is there was compared to what it is now, right? So carbon dioxide is just a fraction of a percent now, and it was up to 20% of um, uh, the atmosphere uh, back in the Archean. And that's, let's see, 1,100... Uh, that's 500 times more carbon dioxide around kind of the Archean and decreasing in the Proterozoic than there is now. Okay, so why is that important? With all the carbon dioxide in the air, all right, when you mix it with um, water that's in the air, it creates carbonic acid, H2CO3, and so it makes acid rain. All right, it makes acid rain. In fact, let me go to... No, this one's fine. So H2O plus CO2, right? That makes, this makes acid rain. So it makes rainwater slightly acidic. Rain is naturally slightly acidic. Um, when I talk about acid rain, I'm not talking about like in some horror movie where it's like acid rain and people's skin starts to burn. It's just slightly acidic. All, all rain is naturally, even now, it's slightly acidic. Um, however, it was a little bit, little bit more so back then. All right. So we have this naturally acidic rainwater. So it's acid and acid dissolves stuff, even very weak acid. Over time, it can slowly dissolve stuff. So you have... Carbon dioxide mixing with water vapor in the air to form this acid rain. And it when it rains down on, for instance, silicate-based minerals. So we have a silicon and oxygen. So this is a silicon-based mineral. I think it's a woolenite. I think this might be. But any of those that I showed you, quartz, uh, olivine, any of those minerals that are in rocks, when it... When the acid rain kind of interacts with these silicate minerals in these rocks, it breaks down the rocks. It breaks down these uh, silicate minerals, so we have silicate weathering, and it breaks it up. For instance, for, for this particular mineral, again, I think it's wollonite. I, I could be wrong. It's, it starts with a W, whatever it is. So this mineral is broken down into calcium ions, into bicarbonate ions, and into silica, SiO2. And so then all of that material then kind of spills into the ocean. Okay? All that material spills into the ocean. Now, let's take these things, the calcium and the bicarbonate that's floating around. All right? When those two things get back together, different organisms uh, can turn them into uh, different things. But when these two things get together, they create calcium carbonate which when it forms this new mineral and precipitates down to the to the bottom of the ocean calcium carbonate that's the mineral calcite and that kind of builds up and that's what eventually makes limestone so we're kind of trapping co2 in acid rain and then kind of trapping it in this bicarbonate and then creating limestone rocks so we're we're taking carbon out of the atmosphere via this acid rain process, we're trapping it with bicarbonate, then these two things combine in the ocean to create calcium carbonate, which is what creates limestone. It's the mineral calcite. Okay? So now, let's say due to plate tectonics, there's limestone due to plate is uplifted and now is exposed. Well, the same thing happened. You take some limestone, this calcium carbonate, and expose it to um, acid rain, and the same thing happens. It breaks apart into calcium and bicarbonate, and this process continues and continues and continues. Now, if that limestone um, or even that sediment uh, encounters a conversion boundary, this is why volcanoes 
part of why volcanoes put CO2 back in the atmosphere because we stored all this CO2 down here in this limestone and now we're melting it and breaking it apart and then releasing it. We're taking that calcium carbonate and, and melting it with some, some of this other stuff that's floating around down there and taking it back to that woolenite and then also creating CO2. So this is what helps volcanoes to get CO2 back into the atmosphere. But we're still trapping more calcium than we are, or more car, uh, carbon than we are releasing it. So that's what helped to decrease that carbon curve a little bit. Um, here's another view of, of all of that that's going on. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to mention here. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be this woolenite calcium silicate mineral. It could be any silicate mineral. They all have slightly different uh, chemical formulas. So instead of calcium, it might be something else. For instance, olivine would be magnesium uh, with silicon and oxygen. So we're breaking it apart and that creates magnesium, which is an essential ion for a number of different organisms in the ocean. The stuff, uh, depending on what the silicate mineral that weathered was, becomes different things. Um, it just so happens that this calcium and bicarbonate, when it gets together, creates calcium carbonate, which is kind of what creates limestone. But if this is, like I said, uh, um, olivine, which might be magnesium or other iron-based silicates, all of those ions can be can, um, uh, uh, combined or used in different ways, whether they become deposits, whether they become food for organisms, whether they, they get turned into shells for organisms in the sea. But all of that due to the carbonate silicate cycle. But in essence, what we're doing is we're taking carbon out of the atmosphere via um, acid rain and storing it in the ocean, whether at the bottom of the ocean, turning it to limestone rock, whether it's organisms utilizing it, creating shells or what have you. But that's why kind of carbon went on the, the, the decrease because this increase of the weathering process. And now we're starting to get this uh, flourish of activity in the in the oceans even these small microorganisms this archaic and, and and bacteria these cyanobacterias but as life diversifies they they use this material in in different ways okay now um so we'll stop here if you'd like to watch more on carbonate silicate weathering because it can be a little complicated Please do watch these videos. These are two separate YouTube videos um, that kind of explain it. And they give you a couple of different examples just to build on to what I told you. So I will have these linked uh, kind of down below in the in the YouTube description. If you're watching this, all right, if you're watching this on Canvas, I always suggest that instead of watching these videos just in Canvas, that you click on the kind of that bottom right corner, or if you move your mouse down to the bottom right corner and it says watch in YouTube, if you click that, it'll watch, open this video in YouTube, and these will be linked in the description of the YouTube video. They're not going to be available in Canvas. So either you um, download the lecture document so you can click on these links, or if you're watching this in YouTube, I'll kind of link those in the description down below. All right, so we'll pause here. Um, so this is how we decreased carbon in the atmosphere. When we come back, we'll talk about how oxygen increased. I'll see you back here in just a second.